So here we go with episode two of Flutter University, where we're gonna go over coding fundamentals that you can apply not only to Flutter, but to any other language as well. Today's topic is the building blocks of programming, especially in Dart. And by the end of this video, we're gonna have an app in the terminal that converts Celsius to Fahrenheit. So a simple program that will cover a lot of the building blocks of programming. So let's get into it. So before we start, I want to get into the terminology of programming. There are five specific keywords that I want you to remember. So first, there are constants. These are values that don't change. So basically like a number, a sentence, a word, things like that. Then we have reserved words. These are words that actually mean something in the language. So in English, we have words that express something, mean something to people. In programming, you have the same thing where specific words actually do something and mean something to the computer. For example, in Flutter, we have words like print. This reserved word tells the computer to take what's ever inside there and put it out on the terminal. And we have variables, which are a name, space, and memory where the user can store data. So you find a place in memory, you label it, let's say X is the variable name. You label this space in memory X, then you can set this space of memory to be equal to one. Then you add the little one in there. Then we have operators, which is similar to math operators. You have plus, equals, division, subtraction, all the similar things you'd see in math. And lastly, when you write a line of code, you're usually writing a statement. So I wanted to quickly cover an assignment statement, which is the most basic statement that you could have, or at least one of the more basic ones. So let's say we have a line of code that looks like this. X equals one. So X is the variable. The equals is an operator. And the one is a constant. And this is a complete line of code. What this does, it takes a piece of memory and it defines this piece of memory as X. And then in here, adds the number one. Now in the next line of code, if we have X equals 100, it deletes the previous value that was stored in X and replaces it with the new 100 value. So one important piece I want to go over is variables. Variables are actually a lot more important than most programmers think. There are a couple key things I want you to remember about variables. In Flutter, if you see an underscore at the beginning, that means this is a private variable. Private pretty much means it's contained to a specific space inside the code. Or maybe a better way to explain it is a global variable. It means anywhere in the code you can have access to that variable. But a private variable, it means you can limit what people have access. And that's actually important in programming because when that part of the code isn't being used, it's not using up memory for that specific variable. But if it's a global, it will probably always be using memory. The next thing, variables are case sensitive. So let's say if you have variables with a capital letter in the middle, that another variable is lowercase, they will be identified as two separate variables. And variables should only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. You can't really have any other things inside a variable or else you'll see an error. And then lastly, this is a best practice that even a lot of advanced developers forget, is to make sure your variables actually mean something, that they're meaningful variable names that other developers are able to easily interpret. The two most popular ways to name variables is using either camel case or separating it by underscores. Personally, camel case is my favorite, but I don't think there's anything wrong with either. And now I want to show you an actual example of why variable names are so important. So here we have a very basic Dart app, which just has a main and as Flutter University. And if we run this, it'll just say Flutter University. That's it. Prints these two statements out. Now underneath, let's add some code. So here's some really simple code. If we run it, we'll get the return 25. But well, what is this code actually doing? I'm sure none of you know what it is. It's obvious that it's 20 plus five, but what these numbers mean, nobody really knows. And although in this case, it might not seem that important, Imagine having thousands and thousands of lines of code and you're trying to figure out what's happening where and there's no way for you to figure it out. Now let me rewrite this code in a more understandable way. So there we go. This is much better written code. You'll see it says price, tax, and then we're printing out the total. If someone was looking at this code, they'll instantly understand what's going on. And it'll be much more easier for all the developers to work together if they understand. And it gives the same output as well. One thing I'd like to mention here is you would probably want to make these private. Do that, you just put an underscore, and now all these variables are private. So in this case, it doesn't actually really matter because this is the whole app. It's in one space, so you're not really saving much. But I think it's a good practice to default to private variables and only use global variables whenever you need to. So you're probably seeing all these ints at the beginning and you're thinking, what the heck is this? These are what we call data types. Now, these are the main data points you should remember in Flutter. If you're using any other programming languages, they probably have something very similar to this as well. Now, ints are pretty much integers. They're exactly what you saw. They're 5, 20, 
any number that doesn't have any decimal places. And now naturally you'll think, well, what if we need to use decimal places in our app? That's where double comes from. Double is pretty much numbers that require decimals. Now you might ask, why would a programming language need two types of numbers? Why can't we just use doubles all the time? Well, the int actually takes up a lot less memory and it's easier to do computations with that. Then we have strings. Strings are pretty much just letters or characters put together and you can store that group of characters in memory and retrieve it as you want. Then we have bool, which is really simple. It's just either true or false. Then we have a list, which is just how it sounds. It's just a list of things. And then a map, which is really similar to a list, except each entry in the list has something that tells you what that entry is. So in Dart, you could use this thing called var, which basically you're not actually defining what the data type of the object is, and you're just letting Dart figure out what it is by itself. My personal recommendation is don't ever use var. Some people like to use it and they have very good reasons to use it, but in my opinion, I never use it. I like to define every single thing that I need. I guess the main argument for this is sometimes you don't necessarily know what the type is gonna be until you get it but that's rare. So let's say we have a variable called x, which is a one in quotes. Now this variable is a string because it is in quotes. That's how you define strings. You can do it either in double quotes or single quotes. Either way, this is a string now. I can prove it to you by we won't see any red lines if we do string. If we define this as an integer, you'll see some red lines pop up. So now let's take bar and define a y variable. In this one, we take x, and let's say we want to add one to it. You'll see we run into problems right here. That's because the data types don't match up. This one is an integer and we cannot add it to a string. But in this section, I wanted to go over how you can actually convert the data types. So here we can do int.parse and then pass the x in. This parses your string. So it goes through your string, finds an integer and returns it to you. And in this case, we'll get the number one plus one. Then we can print y and if you put a dollar sign and then a variable name it will put that in the string that you're passing print and now we'll be able to run it you'll see y equals two when you're trying to debug your app and try to figure out why something's not running you can also find the data type by doing x dot runtime type so in this space it's going to tell you that the runtime type is a string if we run it again see that this is a string, just like we thought. And I wanted to show you another way you could actually print this. So there's really two main ways to print. It's either like this, or then you can print it next to it. But since this is an integer, it doesn't do the automatic changing for you. You need to do two string. And there we go. We get the same exact thing. Now for these last two parts, I'm going to comment out this stuff. So when you comment it out, you won't actually see it pop up in the code. But here we're going to take in a user input. So first let's print out asking, what is your name? And then since we're wanting the name, we'll create the variable name underscore name. And the way you get an input from the terminal is you do std in, which will bring in a library, which we'll cover later. And then you do read line sync. Now this read line sync always returns a string for you. So whatever you put here, it will always have to be a string. You can obviously convert it later if you need to input numbers, but just remember it's a string. And finally, we're going to get to the last part where you print out the name that you entered. So here at the bottom, it asks, what is your name? I'm going to put in Tadis and it returns, hello, Tadis. So one thing to keep in mind, if you're running this in VS Code and you do this run, you'll have some problems. I'll show you. What is your name? I'll try to enter something and I'll say global evaluation requires a thread to have been loaded. The Tadis, Tadis, please. This is because the debug console doesn't support inputs. So the way that you can get around that is by creating a launch.json file, which is basically like a configuration for VS Code, and add this line, console terminal, so that it runs it inside the terminal. And that pretty much does the same thing as if we were running inside a normal terminal. And to do that, you would do dart building blocks dot dart and runs it. What is your name? Tadis, hello Tadis. Very nice and clean. This terminal down here is pretty much the same thing as the terminal you have on your desktop. So the last little piece of code we're going to write is converting Celsius to Fahrenheit because this one actually does something meaningful. But for this one, we're going to need to remember PEMDAS. If you've done this in school, you probably remember this means parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That's the order of operations and in what order you actually do math if there's more than one of these inside. So first, let's print out asking, what is the temperature in Celsius? So we want to be able to accept decimals, so we need to define it as a double. And we're going to be accepting the Celsius, so our variable name should be descriptive of what we're actually getting. I'm going to do std.readLineSync. You notice we have a problem. This returns a string but we need a double. So I can do something similar to what we previously did and do double dot parse. And this will return an input that is a double type from the terminal. Now, how do we get Fahrenheit from this? 
we take the Celsius and the equation is you multiply it by nine fifths and then add 32. Notice we use the parentheses here because those go first and the multiplication and the addition. I think technically it would work without the parentheses, but just wanted to show off my PEMDAS skills. And then we can just print out the Fahrenheit values. And with these four lines, we have an application that we can run whenever we want. If you want to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, we just go to our terminal, type it in, let's say 32, and that gives us 89.6. Let's test with zero, which should give us 32 Fahrenheit, and perfect. So hopefully you understood the basics of Dart and can now create terminal apps. And technically these aren't just for a terminal, you can use this code with a Flutter app as well, or any other space that understands dart code so thank you for watching we got the building blocks of dart figured out now we can keep moving up into more complex and more complex things this code will be on github if you want to take a look if you have any questions or anything leave it in the comments make sure to like subscribe and share if you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching